Okay. So with following on from the YAML uh, base, I guess I kind of built up uh, last time as well as the testing for it. Um, or the basic testing anyways. It's about 98% tested of this stuff, or at least the plain old data parsing types. And the system seems to work okay, even with the macro and all this stuff. So what I want to start doing is actually doing the same here, basically up here, uh, for, I want to actually start doing some real types. So being able to save, like if I have one of these guys, a fragment descriptor or shader loaded in memory, I want to both export it to a YAML file and one day the binary, but right now focusing on YAML, so it's human readable, and then being able to re-import that later. Or opposite wise, just make one raw human within human intuition into a file and just loading that straight up. Um, but first, I'm going to focus on being able to write out what I already have generated, or a fragment descriptor I already have generated. So uh, <clears throat> to begin with, I need to be able to, I need to put the somewhere. I want to kind of put it like a, so like a photo. Yeah, more like a separate library, I suppose. We're just going to basically do a very simple this, this. A definition, which is basically very similar. Uh, the export macro names for graphics. YAML export. It's getting a bit long, but whatever. We'll have a YAML subdirectory in graphics. So we'll put this stuff in. And we've got this. We want, um, we already get these guys from him. So for graphics and for YAML. That, 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 and leave that one there. Okay. We got source, and then the first one we'll do is fragment descriptor. Copyright at the top, slap that at the top. Starting. this or would it do we want to like a create info type um, I don't think so not quite hmm okay not entirely sure as usual I don't really know what I'm doing 
So I'll just uh, create a uh, function that reads and writes. So um, read fragment scriptor. No name. Node. Should be very similar to this. The node and then the data would be last. Um, in this case, oh, I need several shader pool. That'd be an out. And then I'd have to generate one for from the pool, perhaps. Probably. Let me just get it. Return it possibly. Hmm. Not entirely sure. Figure it out. I don't know what the uh, blah, blah blah. Otherwise, YAML write frag and descriptor. Hmm. Damn it. Where we got it. Um, so we got standard string. And then we'd have the YAML. Node and node. these There we go. It's just uh I for um Oh, I also need to include it from in the correct order. Okay. Uh, let's grab the these. Oh, I also need the export.
Okay, first part is if No, I, uh, to start with, I need that um, sub node thing. This turn false. Otherwise, we'll just try. Figure that out in a moment. Um, what do we want? Uh, what do we have for a fragment descriptor? We have the shader. We have uh, all this stuff. Okay. We're reading, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, shaders. I also need it for shaders too. You know, okay, no, I'll leave it here for the moment. Shader subtype file. Okay. Maybe, okay. Okay, maybe if I kind of uh, test material YAML, what, what's it supposed to look like? We'll have like what an albedo material, and it'd be like you know the albedo is a texture is uh, like a texture file an image file something like that then we'd have what we'd have a fragment descriptor and then we'd have other types of descript uh fragment types or whatever we'd have part of that is a fragment shader underneath that we'll say it's like a file shader uh, file dot frag dot spv or something like that. Or just dot frag. And then we'd go through the other types like rasterization, rasterization, and then then from these ones they'll have like subtypes for this depth stencil and color blend attachments. Hmm. So a fragment shader could also be like a inline, and then it have like some like inline data, like the text, which would be like blah, and then we'd have binary type, blah, something like that, and then maybe yeah, some other type of weird shader type. I mean, I could have like file shader up here. Like fragment file shader, but I'd rather have a sh file sh a fragment shader and then like an entire like sub uh, function for determining shader stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll go with that. Um,
Google YAML read reader. And then we have Paste uh, the copyright notice into the hood. This with the phone. Nope, just put it in there. All right, and then I need the introductory stuff for this. Add shader. Hmm. So we got the shame about these guys. Don't know what he is yet. Yeah, that's true.
Okay, now we're just going to trap out on that, which is good. Okay, I'm here. Ah, try. For the time being, there's only one. We'll just say uh, we apply um, file shader. Um, yeah, it'd be required. Otherwise, is that it? No, because then we'd have to, like, um, P shader pool. Find the name. Then we'd be creating it. Or we can just create it, right? Um, or can we? How does it work? I don't even remember. I only just did it recently. Uh... No, it goes through and checks them first. So we can just go straight to create. Otherwise, we catch the uh, YAML exception. And then we're going to add just a little bit on top of it. We're going to, we th uh, we're going to throw a variant. Which is node name plus and then the original message. Yeah, okay.
And then we may as well, while we're here, do the writing. So we've got the node name, we'll have for shader. Ooh, wait, the shader doesn't know. The shader does actually know who he is, right? Yes, he does. For the moment. Okay, we got that, and then we'll uh, YAML node, uh, just end node. Call star. Like so. If node name is empty, then we're in, uh, nah, then we are putting it straight into this one. So node equals p shader name. Hmm, not quite. Let's say I'm in the fragment shader node. So then node um, hmm. file shader. equals p shader name else node node name uh, shader p shader name maybe not oh, sure. Catch whatever the exception is. Throw for YAML exception. Name. got this and we'll return true because again if it doesn't return true then it just accepts that why am i even returning booleans then because otherwise it'll just throw an exception and maybe hmm, find out later For these cases, we're going to throw further back. Oh, uh, is this it? Not quite. Hmm. Ah, we'll find out. Uh, foe, we 
shader, and it'll be we're looking for the fragment shader. Subnode. Shader pool to pass down, and we got the frag shader. Okay. How are we doing? Uh, and then we've got the other things rasterization. Now, uh, yes, for reading and writing all this structs. Um, hmm. uh, I really wanted to just... Okay, yeah, I kind of painted myself into a corner because I really don't want to implement like for rasterization. I don't want to implement individual functions to go through like every type of freaking Vulcan struct with all those options. That's unreasonable to my mind. So, hmm. I'm going to require, okay, I'm going to try to, okay, I need to be able to auto generate these. Let's, uh, Okay, let's 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 do something BK polygon mode as a type. Let's pick a stencil op state. He's required for that. Yeah, okay, let's do this. Stencil op state. Let's say um, in here we're gonna have yes, that's fine. Don't save it. Uh, graphics. We're gonna add a new tools or data. Tools for the moment. Over the like uh, VK struts. And we're just gonna paste that in. I wanna be able to. What I wanna do is basically automatically generate. Uh, source files in the same vein as the plain old data types. You know, following a very simple recipe and be able to almost maybe instantiate. No, I can't instantiate because the structs are all built differently. So you'd have to have a whole bunch of individual nodes, but I don't want to do for all, all of these. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to be able to also go recurse into the types as well. Okay. Let's do a script. We just uh, yeah. <clears throat> so let's uh, just do regular shell until we need something more. Um, need an out file.
would be the input. And then we have the four types. So we have read required equals read optional. It's required and write optional. What we're going to do is we're going to construct all of the functions one at a time or per on a per struct level, I think. And then now put them to the file together. Yeah. And then these will be the like We're going to construct them into these uh, environment variables and we're going to output them at the end. So uh, in the case of like wild, okay, while read line do, and it'll be like um, from the, the file, the starting file. Done, 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 done. Okay. Um, so if line equals something that has struct in it because it's the start of a struct because I want to be able to just copy and paste these guys in and then just be able to like run this shell script and then just output a C++ file then uh, we'll start of a new struct Struct name is cut. Uh, zero, one, two, no, one, two, three. From what we get from uh, line. Will be a string. Then we want to go through then the, the opening bits of each of these. If I, especially if I can automate this in a script, then it means there'll be less of me copy pasting and making mistakes down the line. If there's a mistake, in the logic, it'll apply to all structs, and I'll be able to figure it out and fix it across all of them instead of just a couple of individual ones or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. OK. Let's move that around. OK. Uh, da, 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 da. Parsing. Okay, let's move this over. I already have it here. So reading optional. Let's do read required first. It's a template fixed. Hmm. No, 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 no. Do this. So that way we can at least read and write. Yes. Struct. Put struct in. So be able to reuse this using the struct. So we'll just be able to like YAML read optional the raw type. So we don't actually need a whole bunch of special functions. This will just be like a C implementation. Yes. Okay. Don't quite want that. We want to put this at the beginning. 
we open it up, doing YAML node, um, basically this, right? Optional, optional, required. They'll have to be separate. Yeah, they'll have to be separate. Like that. Then we need um, backspace for that. Okay, we throw that. Otherwise, do this read false. Try. And then we'd be going through each of those. Uh, we want to do basically the same thing for of optional we can actually probably do that that was read required not optional this is the optional one Same thing, except actually, no, this is just this would just return false. And then we'd have to do similar for writing. Right, re write optional, write required. No, we'd need to have separate functions. Hi, uh, this is not exactly quite optional. Almost the same, except we'll also have to do just put that in the corner. Wonderful. Read option, uh, write optional. Data struct const and default data. Is it, which way did I have it? Oh, I wanted it the other way around. Default data is first. Default data, data, node. OK. Then we have pool of added node equals false. 
because we only want to write add this node if we're actually writing something in. Okay, that's it for this. So then we have an elif. Um, uh, we go until we find hit the ending. And it's that. We can actually do a single character type instead. So then, uh, then we'd have an else. We have this stuff. Um, Equals catch whatever happens. Reading so for YAML exception. Otherwise, return read. Okay, I think it means read option will basically be the same. Yeah, uh, the same thing basically. Right required, we throw the exception, node name plus what. Then we need if node name dot empty. And this current node equals right node. Else node of node name equals the right node. Turn true, close it up. And then we have basically the same thing for writing of optional. Except we're gonna to have to wrap this in an if uh, added node. So we don't actually add an empty node. We didn't actually write anything in. Whoops. That we tab these guys up a little bit. Return added node. Okay. The else sec the blah blah. 
Uh, no, no, no. Oh, yes. We'll actually want to echo this out of the file. So echo. This. Two, three, four. But optional. Then we go to this. Don't know what that's going on about. Destruct member. So type. Hmm. Got the type, and then we've got the, the net member name. Hmm. Okay. Type equals. I'm going to do some awk. I feel filthy. Print uh, first item. Comes out of line. Then we'll have to, nope, yeah, we need the var variable. to remove the semicolon. We also shouldn't, uh, for the other types, the, they have like S type and void star types. Just don't even bother with those. Type that's line. But we'll just kind of get rid of all the pointer types at the moment.
If it's a VK or a flags type, so it's a flagging type, like a sample flags. Probably need something special for flags. Because Otherwise, it's going to read it like an integer, probably, or a string. And we can't quite. OK, this will be special. Special. Stack out the line. So we'll, we'll deal with the big case first. Hmm. Hmm. Not. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Type. Okay, let's just get uh, them to all read. Node. Do the same thing for read on optional. The, the, those freaking flags are bugging my mind. How am I going to do it? How am I going to... Mm. Oh, come on, just finish this up. Finish this up before I just panic about everything else. No, writing uh, does, is the other way around. It's data.var. Write node. Right required, right optional, um, almost. OK, we are going to have to do something special about this. Read optional VK.
flag, VK flag or something like that. Optional VK, VK flag, VK flag, VK flag. Okay, let's see how this works at least. Before I decide to just mm -hmm. oh, graphics YAML. Okay, let's, um, yeah, YAML, and we have DK structs. Excellent. It was terrible, failed right off the bat. If else, if else, FI, we have FI that. Command not found. Line 13. Um, I just want the string. Um, oh, probably that. There we go. And what do we have? Okay. Optional, required, read optional, read required. Hmm. I got these uh, backwards as well, actually. Um, data to default data. Right node, do, 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 added node, more equals that. Better node. Oh, I want to tear it out. Okay. Um, YAML pop instructs. Um, uh, VK struct parsing. Okay, uh, we can grab the copyright notice. Include um, K. Does it really matter? I don't think I actually need this. No, I do for the UN32 and string types. Um, Do I need to export? I don't need to export these because they'll all be used internally in the uh, library. Uh, 
Um, copy this into here. What else would I need? Um, string. Vulcan. G. Um, fo YAML exception, really. Exception. Template. Oh, okay. Uh, read required requires closing. Same thing on this. Uh, close others. Move that over there. Close others. I just want to have this. Do, 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 do there. Okay, that actually uh, worked. Or, uh, oh, that's fragment descriptor. Okay, uh, what are the other types that are required? Um, or this. This we got a um, depth. See, so yeah, for him, and then color blend attachment state, which is then eventually used to create this. bottom do that Got a whole bunch of extras put them in at the bottom see how that's going to destroy itself yes the VK flags for um, rasterization state create flags
flag types. Uh, okay, so we've got the structs. We need the uh, flag types. Is there anything else? Op types, PK. No, it may not be necessarily just flag types because uh, this would also include enum types, such as uh, stencil op or compare op. I need to convert, I need to serialize or deserialize or uh, parse them. Okay, BK types. Meaning we're going to require something similar like the plain old data. We're gonna have some kind of instantiation with a whole bunch of uh, things. So, Okay. One of the, the the VK type. Yeah, we'll be required VK. Yeah, not VK flags because it could just be a VK type. Let's fix that up here. VK VK V. Oh. Hmm. VK. Here we go. Similar to plain old data, We've got the type name, then we have the other items. And the K type that we're returning. Okay, uh, we need Need some headers to declare these as well. Mm, or will we? Not sure. If. Okay, we can at least follow the same pattern as plain old data for parsing. So required can go into the optional.
YAML node. I got that. Okay, uh, for the types, I do have include, okay. Parsing, parsing, type parsing. Part of this include VK values here. Serialization. Which means uh, inside of this, sorry, VK values serialization. We actually go inside one of them to know which one we actually want. DK parse, serialize, serialize parse. Hmm. Okay, type. Type name as standard string. Okay. Okay. like the plain old data type in order to kind of sneak around the type name thing. Hmm. Do I need the VK what type ones then? Hmm. 
Okay, YAML read required of type T, uh, type name, node name, node, and data. Something like that. Okay, basically the same thing. Optional type name, T data stuff, yeah, okay. We just copy this almost entirely, yeah. Record. That's a VK type. So it's a VK type here. Okay, I got basically the same thing for this as well. BK, BK. Mm hmm. Basically, again, like this is basically the same as these guys. T, I go to the K. I need a bunch of instantiations. Uh, in this case, what was it? I needed like the case tends a lot. Pair up. Uh, the error types are coming as the cold mode flags. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Uh, Vulcan Core up here somewhere should be a massive list of all the types. Not quite the ones I'm looking for. Um, ooh. Not quite what I'm looking for. Uh, value serialization right now. Should actually have a nice, here we go. All these types. A 
Okay. Um, control H. We want a regex of to the da up to first. Um, that move them or just replace them with instantiation it's just all these ones down here so we've got this space uh comma space start da for all these ones oh Quite. Oh, crap. No, null pointers. No. Nope, no, don't cut them either. Just want to copy and paste them. That's all. Okay. Yes. Actually, no backup. I also want to get rid of the quote. Oh, I can just replace them all. Bam. With, uh... Bam. Okay. So what's wrong with these guys? Okay, PK type parsing. Okay. Do I did I just not? I didn't even really. Probably because there aren't any. Or no. Not quite. Can I just do this? Mm-hmm. 
probably hmm. No, I can't do the other one because otherwise it'll just be you and thirty-two. I need to actually, so I need to actually export them. Right. Hmm. Okay, if I'm going to do this, then I need to also have the type. Flag types can do this. Hmm. VK stands a lot is what? It's an enum. So that'll come through correctly. It's these flag types that are int, so I need to be careful about them. So many variables flying about wildly all the time. Okay. Um, Snow VK call mode flags. Why? Is it because it's the flag bits? Okay. Uh, read optional, read required. Did I just skip read required? I skipped read required. Um, that's probably why. Okay.
don't this for type. Data. Okay, yeah, it still needs this, so um move string. Still need these two, so we get rid of that one, we get rid of that. got to include it well that's a different issue no function template matches what expand for macro templating let's just go with this just want to exit this. Let's get through this. And then open a new one. Okay, hold on. Oh, so these are extra export things, right? No. Okay, that should come into here. Then we'll go to the read required. Just right here. Ooh, maybe that's why. Maybe it needs to be the other way around. Because otherwise it's running into dependency. Whoops. Nope. Okay. 
just do one. What's wrong? Incomplete definition of convert VK image layout. Okay. Right, yes. I need to ser I need to see I need to serialize it. Okay. Okay. Goes in here, it tries to serialize it. If not, see, then we uh, do serialized data. Okay. but I'm specializing it right here. Right optional, right required is beforehand. Sorry, what? Hmm. Where is this? It's right up here. Do I like need to forward to clear it or like or what what if we were to do uh, this type instead Same deal. Like I know no function template matches it. That's why I'm creating it right here. Do I need to have like um, like the declaration done first or something? 
Uh, yeah, apparently. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's, yeah, okay. Sure. Um, okay, he's not. Yeah, he, he crabs out on 7 4 flag bits. Why? Okay, because there's no actual flag bits type for some form of great flags. They're just that. Okay. Okay. Um, and the struct seems to be okay with this. Hmm. This could probably be... These guys are just turning out to be VK flags, right? And I don't actually have flag bits here. So I need a instantiation of just flags. Okay. Um, okay. Back to where was I? Get rid of him. Get rid of him. We're done. Well, done for the moment. Done. 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 Fragment descriptor. Yes, this is where this all started. Way back. So. Fragment descriptor.
Okay. You do that stencil. This is actually an array of these guys. Okay. Color blend of these guys. If it exists, um, it should. Otherwise, we'll let her out. Oh, no, maybe not. May not have any attachments. So this is hmm, optional. Hmm. Okay, if we're here, then we've got to go through. We've added them all. Uh, then we need to, what? We need to. Uh,
um, and rasterization and depth stencil and code blend hmm And now we need the opposite. <clears throat> so. Technically, the fragment changer should be like the last thing.
Uh, these are all optional. How do I write an array? I have a node that I generate for each, and I just push it back to the end. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Array node, uh, p fragment descriptor, color blend attachments. Oh, yeah, okay.
Okay. That should be... the basic implementation. Okay. I'll go offline now. I'll add a bunch of tests for the Vulcan struct and the Vulcan type parsing. And then next time I'll come back trying to actually read and write the fragment descriptor. It's already been uh, nearly two hours. Cheers. <clears throat> so after that embarrassing second, we are in what was I going to do? Okay, yes, now that I, ha I have the basic uh, graphics with just this triangle down in the corner, if it's actually going to load or not, there it is. Now I need to, a uh, saving loading to and from YAML. Now that I have the actual YAML and Vulcan, basic Vulcan YAML conversions, of structs and types uh, in the source types, which is a generic thing, and part and the structs which are not, which are auto generated by this little script here. Now I need to actually put into place this the uh, the actual to and from YAML now, or at least to start with to save to YAML file and then be able to reload it out. Because I already have a, in this case, a fragment descriptor declared or defined in the code. So I want to actually take this and spit it out to a file. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off that for the moment. And then I'm going to basically create just a temporary thing where I'm just going to to file. So I need a L H um fragment descriptor. And I need to actually add this file, this library to actually be included here. Uh, set locale nonsense. Okay. It's loaded. I need to, okay, how did I write it out, emit it? Emitter. Okay. Oh no, it's PP is probably H, right? Um, YAML, right, acquired. Um, no, I have very, I have specialized functions for this. YAML, right, fragment descriptor. Node name will be fragment. The data will be Four. Oh no. And this is just the root node. Once we've written out to the node, we're just going to emit it. Emitter. Root node. 
and then we're going to want to spit it out to a file. So I'm just going to use the basic F string, just, just type prototyping basically. F stream. It's just text. Then we just exit out the, the whole thing early. Or actually, I could just. Um, Go to shutdown program. That'll also exit out real early. Faux graphics YAML fragment descriptor dot HPP. Um, why can you not find it? Um, I, I may have messed this up a little bit. No, that's right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see what we got, including. Do, 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 do. No, we, oh, we, we do have include. We do have this. Go rather push D. Go there. Mm -hmm. Oh, graphics, YAML. And then we have fragment descriptor. Okay, maybe if I actually what what candidate function not viable. No no conversion from fra, fo, fra, oh pointer. Yeah, okay, I'm just looking at the complete wrong uh We got some fun little differences, structs. Class. Oh, it keeps changing. This is fucking this is really annoying this thing. Okay, run the file. Uh, run run it real quick. So now in here we should have test out that YAML, which prints nothing. Wonderful. I love it when it fails. Okay, well let's see what we got. We go in. 
get past the uh, this stuff. We'll go in, write note. I never write the note out. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that's 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 why I never write the note out. Good job, me. I know what I'm doing. If no, yeah, this. Now we have the stuff. Rasterization data, the color blend attachments, of which there's only one. And then fragment shader. It's a file shader, or load, uh, uh, a shader loaded from file. And that's it. Okay. So let's see if we can actually read it in and then compare it. So let's actually um, scope this up so it all cleans itself up. from um, input stream. So I need to actually uh, note out that means we'd have a uh, fragment descriptor how do we read it we have all this fun stuff okay it also returns a bool right. node name it's this root node uh, shader pool Descriptor pool. Hmm. I don't have that yet, do I? Not here. Okay. Shader pool, material pool, it goes between them. Here, add it in. That and then we're gonna have and script four. Mm. That is actually quite interesting if I change it over okay before I do this I want to change it over to use the fragment descriptor pool so 
so first of all, we add create and we got to initialize. Don't even need to initialize it. Nice. It's odd, but okay. Git. We have um, we got nothing for this. And we have the P shader. So effectively the same thing. Um, except for one, it's going to be a pointer instead, so fragment. Okay, whoop. That becomes that. Clear that out. It becomes a pointer. There you are. And then down here somewhere, wherever else I'm supposed to use him, if I even use him anywhere. There we are. That's, um, we need that, so I still have it. Uh, oh, yes, of course it's frozen. Hmm. Ah, excellent. Seg fault. Nice. Why? Is this a null pointer? Uh, yeah, he is. Why is he a null pointer? Does he not work? Why does he not work? Let's find out. I'm sorry. Did F11 not mean to go inside of the function? What? Am I crazy? File commands are here. Go inside the pool, hit get. Okay. Whoops, no, start. Go here. Now there's no descriptors, so I should just apparently not create a new one. Because I accidentally removed it for some reason. Return that instead. Sterilization, depth stencil, color blend, fragment. Add a new descriptor, then return that. Okay. Okay, now. Okay. 
Do that. Add new one. Return it. It's real. Nice. Uh, now, test out and test out two. They're both the same. Good. 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 Now let's um make sure that if I was to try to re get recapture the exact same one again, the fragment descriptor that is. It would basically, it would be the same one. New fragment descriptor. Go, go. Hmm. Yep. We then go inside. Ah. What? No. One, two, go inside. Oh, yes, wonderful. Same uh, fragment description, uh, fragment shader. Do a bunch of comparisons. They're all the same, so it should not hit continue. We return the fragment descriptor. We are scope locked, so we leave without issue. This guy, 5e00, is the same as not the same. Wait. Yes, yes, they are the same. Just don't know why it's not showing up quite here. She's showing up as whatever. Probably because it's not being used again, so it just auto discards. Okay. Now, what I want to do is this I want to get out a new fragment descriptor. I want to make sure it's the same one. Okay. That just passed the pointer in, right? Accident. Instead, it just crashes. Whatever reason. Um, <clears throat> with an exception that I'm not even capturing. Why fragment descriptor a death stencil required node not found? A par says that. Ah, yes, it's not a required node, is it? None of these are actually. <laughs> Dang.
L equals that. And that can just actually remain null pointer. And if it doesn't come through, then it becomes uh, as rasterization. If true, do that. Otherwise, null pointer. As death stencil, what's that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try that again. Try that again. Hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, so that makes sense. We do have that. We do not have that. We're going to have this. Okay, so I'm going to get the same thing because it didn't get the fragment shader out. Okay, how do I read uh, frag fragment shader is test.frag.spv. I didn't get it out because let's have a little look. Says reading. I do write it out. Fragment shade. Okay. Go. We go into the sub node, then we see if we. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's annoying. Yes, that's great. We go in here, we got us, we're in the subnode. We then check. We do get that out. There are two shaders, test frag and test that. Okay, let's see why. Going to go through the shaders. If name is this, which it obviously isn't. Otherwise, if it's this, we do return the shader. P shader, no, P shader does become it. What? P fragment is null still. Right. Yes. Pointer or pointer. You idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm.
Hmm. Yeah, so I need to change up the this. It needs to be pointer pointer. Same thing for this for fragment descriptor as well for passing it back. Matching function call to this, yeah, because it's and that. That's annoying. Mm -hmm. Still only have the two. You only have one descriptor, so by the end, you should be giving me the exact same one descriptor. Means new frag descriptor is BEO, BEO, D6, D6, the same. Okay, so I should be able to load these guys straight from file now as well as save them so save and load nice now if only I could figure out a nice way to package these up into files in the file system be a little bit, just a little bit closer. This is what this would be like part of a material. It would describe the fragment and the shader and the albedo and stuff like that. Hmm. Of which I don't even use this yet. <laughs> of course not. Okay. Let's figure out the material then. Or um, actually, no. Save these guys up. So first of all, actually, engine, add the fragment descriptor pool, stage that. Uh, fragment descriptor pool, yes. Not quite. Fragment descriptor pool becomes that. Don't need any of this quite yet. That changes up to this. Don't need that yet either. It also means we need the fragment descriptor pool here. And this file, this one. Uh, 
That's inconsequential for the moment. Okay, now we add the YAML stuff. Added YAML. Functions at a YAML uh, parsing. Okay, that's what I need for the moment. So those are in. Next, um, I kind of want to do the ammo, but I really should kind of put it in. I don't want to export this quite too far yet. I need to, okay, I need to figure out the material stuff first. So. Create a material. Create I'm only giving it a name. I'm not actually giving it any. Hmm. I'm not, hmm. How do I define material? A de material, okay, how do I define material? It's literally a file name right now. And okay, let's open the actual file for this, please. The file name is the external thing for it. Otherwise, it's made up of a fragment descriptor and material descriptor. Hmm. Okay, for the moment, let's kind of put this at the end rather than. Create a material like that, which is made up of uh, the fragment descriptor and the material which we'll pass in for the moment. We don't actually have any material descriptors yet, do we? Just the basic one. And this one, I don't even have images for yet either.
So material is kind of pointless until I can actually figure that out. Okay, so let's back out the material for now. Material goes away. Not useful quite yet. I kind of have I'm not quite going to put this to file. What, what do I have? I have about an hour and a half on this. Okay, I'm going to call it on this one. Cheers.